Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, and my friends, never, never, never to harm you. Welcome to United with Christ. This is Pastor Orlando. Stay tuned because the best is yet to come. United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Jesus is alive in El Paso. Jesus is alive in Las Cruces, New Mexico, in Juarez, everywhere. The Lord is the King, Lord of Lords. Listen, this is Pastor Orlando. Welcome to the show. I have a special program for you. I think the Lord is going to continue to speak into your life to move you from where you are to where the Lord wants you to be. Now, many of you may be experiencing uh, some sort of sickness. Some of you might be going through situations, depressions, anxiety. I don't care what it is. I do care, but the Lord cares the most. Make sure that you call the number on the screen, people standing by to take your prayer requests. I want to spend time with you in the Word. And at the end of the program, I'm going to be praying for you, for your sickness, that the Lord will heal you. Listen, Jesus is a healing Jesus. He loves you. He cares for you. He has the best future for your life that no one can uh, illuminate you or tell you about. Jesus is alive. He is real. He is present here with me, in me, and he is surely present in your life, especially if you have made the Lord uh, Jesus the Lord of your life. By the way, if you have not, let's say that you have maybe gone astray, something happened to you, your faith is weak, and you have left the church, can you just do me a favor right now, right there, just reconcile yourself to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I come back to you. Forgive my sins, I confess them. Wash me in your precious blood and fill me afresh with the Holy Spirit and His power. And lead me to a church where I can grow and, and become the person that you want me to become. If you, make, if you make that prayer with me today, make sure you call the number on your screen. Let us know that the Lord touched your life immediately, just beginning the program, and healings are flowing. The, the power of God is here. You don't have to wait. Call the number on your screen. Let us know what, how can we pray for you and what the Lord is doing in your life. Now, listen, make sure you go to the Facebook page and, and uh, they, they have a YouTube channel where you can, uh, when you can watch the program from the last few weeks. I've been here ministering in English every Thursday for the month of July. This is the last one, of course. Once uh, videos go out, it's an evergreen situation that you can watch and watch and watch because I want you to go back to the last few programs, especially the last one before this one. We were talking about something very important that I think God's people need to hear. Right location, right leadership. Those are the voices that are speaking into your life and the right influence, which means the right experience. What is the question? You know, God spoke to Adam when Adam and Eve fell into sin in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3. When they were hiding from the Lord because they were fearful, they were naked. You know the story. God asked Adam, where are you? That is right location. You have to be in the right location in your thought life, your emotions. And some of you need to consider where you are geographically. Now, I'm not saying that you have to move, but I'm saying that if your experience with God is not to the utmost, is not high, you're not experiencing His presence, His power, you have lost your peace, you have situations, circumstances, mountains are, are facing you, or you have people who are drawing the life out of you, that is not God's will for you. Your emotional state and how you think thinking determines a spiritual location in your life. And you need to move to where you can hear God's voice again, where you can have peace. It doesn't matter what is happening in your life. Now, what moved Adam and Eve to the location where, where they were spiritually speaking at the time God spoke that question and asked, where are you? Where are you? And then they answer, you know, as a, star, as a, as a Bible story says, you have to understand this. The voices that you're listening to will determine your location mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, and oftentimes physically. 
there are times where people have to move geographically in order to go to that place where God wants them to be. You know what I'm talking about. So the Lord asked Adam, where are you? They gave him the answer. And then he asked a second question. He said, <clears throat> have you eaten of the fruit of the tree that I told you not to? That means when you're listening to the wrong voices in your life, excuse me, <clears throat> when you're listening to the wrong voices in your life, they will move you into a place where you don't want to be in your mind, emotions, and, in, and, and oftentimes, as I just said, physically. Then God asked the third question. That was, um, it, it, what it meant to me is that, um, what are you experiencing as a result? He said, where are you? Who told you you were naked? That was the second question. And on the third occasion, he said, have you eaten of the three of the fruit that I told you not to? That means when we are, in the, when we are listening to the wrong voices in our lives, we are moving to the wrong location. And then we have an influential situation there where it is an experience. So here it is, just to recap, go back to the last show and you will, you will hear the whole thing. But because <clears throat> today I want to give you part two and the final part of this, of this series that I think is important for you to know. God said, your location and the leadership, the voices you're listening to will allow you and will take you to experience something that you might not want to experience. Because the voices that are speaking to us today in the news in, on social media. Look, you're not called to listen to every voice that is out there. Even in the kingdom, we have streams, and it's important that you stay in your spiritual stream. If your spiritual stream is the Holy Spirit stream, the, the word of faith and miracles and signs and wonders, don't go out there to listen to something that is not what God is calling you into. You got to stay in your stream. Location, voices you're listening to will give you an influence or an experience that will determine God's destiny for you. Go back to the video uh, of last week and you will, you will find that entire teaching there. Today, I want to talk to you about what are the consequences of being in the right location, listening to the right voices, and the, having the right influence or experience. And we began this show today with, um, with a scripture out of Jeremiah 29, 11, where it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, but God cannot fulfill those plans in your life if you are in the wrong location, listening to the wrong voices and having the wrong experience, the influence in your life. His plans are to prosper you and not to harm you. That's a key right there. Let's say that you are facing a circumstance in your life, whatever a kind, and you uh, are not experiencing a spiritual prosperity, you are experiencing a sort or sorts of harmful behavior, thought life, emotions, and um, ways of acting. You are living in a way that is not in line with God's word. Did you hear what God says? I know the plan. So God has a plan for you. That means that when you are in the right location listening to God's voice and God's voice through those who he has appointed to speak into your life and you are having the right influence and you're having the right experience, you will know God's plans for you. Why? Because that means one of the greatest needs of the human race is a sense, the need for the sense of purpose and meaning. What is your destiny? Why are you here for? What is God calling you to? What do you need to become in order for you to achieve and meet that destiny call that God has for you. Ephesians chapter 2, a very powerful scripture where the Lord says through the apostle Paul that we are created in Christ Jesus for those works that he has prepared beforehand. If you don't know why you are on this planet, there is something wrong. But God has a revelation for you. You have to be in the right location, listening to the right voices so that you can acquire the right influence and experience. And that is to know by faith what is God's exact plan for your life. He says those plans have a consequence. That is that it will bring prosperity and never, 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 never the, the plans of God for you will bring harm into your life. Then he says there is hope. Imagine how the world is today with all of the technology. The world cannot find hope. All of the stuff that they're doing and the money and all the things that people are achieving out there, but people don't have hope. They don't have faith and they don't have peace. 
God's plan will always, will always have hope and a future. And a future. And a future. And will never, 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 I don't care how it comes, will never bring any sorts of harm at any percentage points. Not 1%, 100%, never God's plan will bring harm to you. If you are in that situation, I want you to call the number on, on your screen and ask for prayer. Say, Pastor Orlando, I want to get out of this situation. Look, get away from that struggle. Get away from that. I just, the Holy Spirit just pushed me there in a, in a good way because he doesn't push us anybody. He's gentle, but I think he spoke to me. Get away from that struggle. Get away from that struggle. Somebody's watching and you need to listen to this. That struggle is not God's plan for you. Problems and circumstances will come, but we face them with faith. We face them with strength. We face our troubles and situations with peace and joy. The apostle James says, count it all joy when you are tempted. That means when you're going through different situations that cause affliction. Pastor Orlando, what are you saying? That it is possible for you to face your circumstances with joy. Not the joy of feelings, the joy of the Lord. What is that joy? The joy that the Bible says that that too will pass. That there is hope and there is a future for you. That the best is yet to come. So get away from the struggle. That means get away from struggling inside of you. Just believe and say, God, I trust you. I believe in you and I know that this too shall pass. And then face that mountain in the name of Jesus with God's word. Speak to it, climb on it, go around it, move from where you are where God wants you to be. That is God's will. So when you are in the right location and you're listening to the right voices, Pastor Orlando, how do I know when I'm listening to the right voices? Listen to me. This is very important. Peace and joy comes when you're listening to the right voices. Number one. Number two, when you're listening to the right preachers and teachers and pastors and apostles and prophets in your life, people who encourage you, they will never pull you down. They will always encourage you. They will always believe in you. Go where people like you. Get away from places where people don't like you. It is okay if people don't like you, but it's not okay that you stay there. Come on. Change the voices in your life to voices that move you forward. Do you know that the right anointed preacher, let me just say this to you. Listen, listen to me with your heart and, and souls and spirit. Look, the preacher, the messenger matters. It, the word of God is powerful by itself. But when that word comes through the right persons that God has appointed for you in your life, you have to be in the right church with the right pastor. You have to be in the right community where you can fellowship. And you know you're in the right place listening to the right voices where you are moved forward, when, where, where you are inspired and encouraged and given peace and joy and you have hope. If there is no hope in your life right now, then you are not in Jeremiah 29, 11. Because God says, my plans produce hope and faith because future is about faith where you have the substance that you are going to arrive to the best destiny, that best port of life that God has for you. If you're not there, call the number on your screen. Of course, I'm going to pray for you in just a few minutes at the end of the program. I'm believing that God is speaking to your life. I just keep hearing the Holy Spirit saying to somebody, get away from the struggle. Get away from the struggle. Get away from the struggle in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Number two, when you are in the right location, listening to the right voices, and those right voices will always, always build you up and encourage you. They will move you forward. They will give you faith. They will, uh, they will allow you to think or they will lead you to think about no fear in your life, no fear in your life. They will always lead you to Jesus and they will always lead you to God's word and to believing what God says in the scriptures. That is what the right voices do in your life. And then you have the emotional and the mental and the physical experience that allows you to face your mountains and win. You got to stay until you win. Never give up. Get the joy of the Lord inside that is not based on feeling. It is based on God's word. And then move forward and face your situations. God will help you as you step forward. Amen.
when you are in the right location and listening to the right voices, something very special happens in your life. And that is that, that you are going to be led by the Holy Spirit into the second greatest need of every human being. Now, the first greatest need of any human being is that you have a sense of purpose. You know why are you here on earth? What is your destiny? You know that. Number two, you need connection and belonging. Because the Bible says that right leadership and right location and right influence will always lead you into the right community. Look, I was speaking to someone uh, just recently and we were talking about love and the connection with God's people. If I say I love God, that generates in this direction relationships. When I love God, I have good relationships. When I love God, I have good relationships. If I am in Christ, I have a relationship with the church. And this is so important. It is not God's will for people to be away from a community of faith. For where two or three gather in my name, the Bible says in Matthew 18, 20, there I am with them. If you're not gathering physically with people of like faith that can encourage you, you're in the wrong location and you're missing your destiny and time is running out and you don't have much time you, because time runs out, time goes by. And the older, the older you get, you gotta have less strength to meet the power and the destiny that God has for you. So look, let me just put it simple. Go back to church. It's not God's will that you're not in church. You need to be in church. You need to be in the right church for you where they encourage you and when you can use, where you can use your gifts to touch other people's lives. I need you and you need me. We're part of the body of Christ. That is why the Bible says, I therefore, uh, Paul speaking, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. And then if you keep reading, he says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and the Father of all, who is over all and through all in all. And then he talks about grace. You know, then in Ephesians, he says, do not get drunk with wine. Don't go out there isolating yourself. Uh, and, and becoming depressed, but be filled with the Spirit. And then look what it says. Being filled with the Spirit is directly connected to addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That means you need to be in a place where the people sing the songs you sing and you sing the songs that people sing. That means you have to be in agreement. You have to be in agreement. You have to be in a place where people speak the same language. Come on, go back to church. Stop just doing everything online. That doesn't work. It's not helping and listening. I am a pastor who visits hospitals and I do hospice with patients who are, that are at the end of life. It is not right for humans to die alone. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to die, but you got you to gotta make sure you think about the seeds you're sowing in your life today. Create relationships. Get into a community of faith. You have to overcome that spirit and that lack of feelings uh, and being positive about coming to church. Of course, it's going to cost you time and it's going to cost you money to move to church. But for your future and your destiny and to be obedient to God, you need to know that you need to get yourself into the right community. Then the Bible says that when you are in the right location and in the right, uh, listening to the right voices, and you have the right influence in your life, and you have the right experience, you have a sense of purpose. That means you know God's plan, Jeremiah 29, 11. You are in a community of faith where you are both, both being built and building others. And look at this. You have the right influence. That means that you receive inner peace and fulfillment. Whoa, so many millions of Christians everywhere do not have inner peace and fulfillment in their lives. Think about it. When I am in the right location listening to the right voices in my life and I am having the right influence, I mean the right experience as a result of what I am mentally, emotionally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, I'm listening to the voices that are leading me in the right direction. I'm having the right experience, the peace of God that passes all understanding overtakes you this is this is something that is the third most important need of the human race a sense of purpose number one a sense of belonging you are part of a community number two and number three dear lord listen to this 
the Lord will bring the peace of God in your life. Jesus said, peace I live with you. My peace I give you. To whom was he speaking to? To the disciples. He was, he was not speaking to islands out there that think that because they have this and that and the technology today, they can survive. My friend, my friend, you cannot do it by yourself. You cannot achieve anything in your life in this world that doesn't involve at least one human being. Think about it. You were not born by yourself. You're not there in your place where you are right now, whether it is a negative or a, or a positive place by yourself. Somebody said something to you. Somebody did something to you and something did something to you. So you didn't do it by yourself. You got to go back then to the right location, listening to the right voices and to have the right influence in your life and experience so that the Lord will meet the needs that you have for number one, a sense of purpose. And number two, the right community where you can survive this world. You need to be around people that can encourage you. And number three, when you are by yourself, you have inner peace and fulfillment. That is God's will. My peace I give you, not as the world gives it to you. You know what that means? As long as you're away from God's destiny in your life, and as long as you are in the wrong circles, you will not, you will never have peace peace and you will never be truly uh, fulfilled in your life now jesus said do not let your hearts be troubled it is your responsibility that doesn't come by osmosis you have to make the decision to know god's destiny for you through his word to have the right leadership in your life and so that you can have the inner peace and fulfillment that jesus is speaking about about his peace Look what, is, what the Bible says in Psalm 37, 4. And we're about to pray for those who, who need healing and a touch from the Lord in just a moment. Please continue to call the number on your screen. Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Well, look, you cannot delight yourself in, in, in the Lord by being by yourself. You need to be in His Word. You need to be in the church and, and then you need to be listening to what the Bible says and to the right voices. These verses will assure you that peace comes through the right relationships that you have with God and with God's people. Look, we're about to finish this program. My name is Orlando Terrero. I'm, I'm gonna, I, gotta, I gotta tell you, I want you to find the videos from the last few shows. They will bless your life. Share them with somebody else. And call the number on your screen so that you have prayer for your needs. And I'm going to pray in just a few minutes. Do not go because the Lord has more to tell you. If you are a, um, a person in your life and you're by yourself and you don't have a church, you need to get yourself into a church urgently because Satan is going to knock on your door and he's going to knock you down. That's, that's a, it's a spiritual law. You need to be in the community of faith for your own health, mental health, physical health, and prosperity. If you want God to meet your destiny and take you there, you need to get yourself uh, inserted in a church. Now, we have, for those of you who are in need of a biblical training for ministry, I am the founder of a Bible Institute program that works in conjunction with Oral Roberts University. I have several degrees from Oral Roberts University. And I have a program where if you need to study and be trained in the scriptures, and learn ministry and be equipped, whether you are an individual or a local church. Maybe you're a pastor and you're watching, you have a church and you want these programs. Oral Roberts University will, uh, will release certificates at Bible Institute level to students and churches who want to join with this program. I do the teachings. I can teach you Hebrew and Greek, Old Testament, New Testament, anything you like from the scriptures because that's my profession. I'm a professional Bible teacher. And I believe I'm anointed because <clears throat> you need Bible teaching and the messenger matters. So you need anointed people teaching so that as they impart God's word, they also the anointing touches you. And that is what brings transformation. So if you're a pastor at a church and you need a Bible Institute program in your church, get a hold of me, 915-314-5050 or call the station. They will give you my information. If you are Hispanic watching and you speak uh, Spanish, but you also speak English, we are gathering a group of people here to train them and to bless their lives. Get a hold of me. Are you ready for prayer now? Listen, I'm going to pray that the Lord is going to touch your life physically, mentally, 
and, and, and emotionally. But I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit is going to fill you afresh right now with a new vision for your life, a fresh vision, a fresh vision that, that gives you joy. You, what you need is a Jordan River experience where the waters part and then you can go. And then, but you have to have clarity. I want to pray that God will give you faith. I think I'm speaking to people who are struggling with knowing why are they here? Why, why are you where you are? Uh, why are you experiencing what you're experiencing? Of course, make some changes. Right location, okay? For those of you who have to move physically, you pray first. I'm not saying that you move, but you pray about it first. But move away from the struggle and begin to focus on God's word. And if you're listening to people that are negative and negative news all the time, and the, look, get away from that. Get into God's word. Go back to your church. Speak to your pastor. Get back to revival. Okay? Revival doesn't happen because it comes. You make the decision to be alive in the Holy Spirit. Go back to prayer and fasting. Go back to reading the Bible and go back to church. Go back to church. Okay? Get away from that struggle. I think that's a powerful word for you. Now, listen. And, of course, you have to measure what, are, what you are experiencing. That's very important. I want to pray for Caroline. Caroline, uh, Carolina, I pray for you in Jesus' name. Um, oh, my goodness. We'll pray for that. Thank you. Arturo Duran and so many of you. We don't have much time, but so many of you are asking for prayer for healing. Carolina, in the name of Jesus, Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for your grace and your mercy. We release the anointing in Jesus' name for, for changes in behavior in people that need to go back to you. And I pray for peace and joy upon your life, Carolina, in the name of Jesus. Um, Arturo, Arturo, in Jesus' name, be healed that sickness and disease in your eyes. I pray for new vision in your life physically. But also, I want to pray that the Lord gives you a fresh vision for your life uh, individually. Those of you who are sick in body, just stretch out your hands. By his stripes you are healed. I rebuke sickness and disease in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for peace that passes understanding on those who are struggling in their minds, for emotions to be balanced by your word in Jesus' name. I hear the Spirit saying, be quiet. Just be quiet. Quiet your mind and go into the word of God and begin to meditate in God's word and that peace will come and overtake your life in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are struggling financially in Jesus' name, that the Lord will open the door for you for that new source of income in the name of Jesus. I'm believing for that miracle. And I want to pray for those of you who are asking for the church to go to, in Jesus' name, that door's open. This is Pastor Orlando. It's been a blessing to be with you. This is United with Christ, and the best is yet to come. Bye-bye.